The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Canola School series. I'm Kara Oosterhouse. Today we have Luis Del Rio, who is a North Dakota State University professor. How's it going today? It's going really good. I'm very happy to be here. Canola Palouse is awesome. Awesome. So could you tell me a bit about what you're talking about here? Uh, yes, I'm going to talk about the life cycle of Sclerotinia, Sclerosurum, that's a fungus that causes a problem on canola. And we are going to discuss some points on how to manage it and also how to estimate the risk. So it all starts here with, with these structures. These dark structures here are called sclerotia. They germinate in the ground after proper conditions ha have been established. It produces a stipe that elongates probably no more than an inch or an inch and a half in length. Eventually, that stipe widens up, produces ascospores. At maturity, those ascospores are forcibly released into the air in a puffing, uh, violent movement. Poof. And then those spores just float around float around and start moving, and then that's how they land on casted petals on the plant. From there, with moisture and, and good temperatures, it germinates, colonizes the flower, gets into the stem, and that's how it kills the plant. Once the plant is infected, new sclerotia is produced in the, in the pit of the stems, and that way the cycle is completed. Now, when you harvest, your machines are cutting the stems, are releasing those, those sclerotia yeah, yeah. back into the ground. So the next time you come around, that sclerotia will be ready to start the cycle again. So how do we stop this? But the first thing that we need to think is that sclerotia can survive in the soil for more than five years or, or, or three or four or five years, right? So uh, if we space the times in between canola crops, like say canola, then wheat, and then barley or another grass. That way we are buying time for the sclerotia to just die down, okay? Uh, the sclerotia that has been on the ground for four years or three years is, is gonna be weakened. It's gonna be uh, incapable of producing enough amounts of spores, and that's how crop rotations can help us. But the other way that we can uh, optimize management of the disease is trying to estimate the risk of infection. Now, the main factors that contribute to the risk of infection are uh, precipitation and temperature. So if you have a weather station, you can collect information from that and then use that information and data that you can obtain in a field to develop uh, programs that could estimate the risk. We have done that at one point back in North Dakota, and now we are producing this type of this type of maps. In this map, we are using color-coded uh, images to reflect risk. So the red one is high risk, the green is low risk, the intermediate is basically in between. But in addition to that, we are providing growers now with a risk calculator that includes a series of questions so that the grower can provide some input that is specific for their own fields and then combine that with the general risk of this, this area and obtain then a more tailored information for their fields. This uh, uh, risk map estimator is available uh, through apps that can be up, uh, open in, in cell phones, so growers can, can use it. Is there anything else you think producers should know when it comes to sclerotinia? Uh, well, the one, the one thing that is, is left probably is that once you decide to make an application of fungicides, uh, you need to consider the growth stage of the crop. Typically, you will get the best response from your fungicide if you apply it when the plants are at somewhere in between 20 and 40 percent of bloom. Past that stage, the return that you are going to get from that application is going to go down. Prior to that stage, same deal. So the optimum is 20 to 40 percent. And when in the season will producers be seeing those little mushrooms on the ground? Typically, Typically, when, uh, when you have rain during the three weeks prior to the flowering event, that's, that will be priming the sclerotia to produce uh, the apothecia. 
Once it's primed, the sclerotium is going to take about three weeks, really, to produce that apotheosis. That's why uh, watching precipitation uh, during that period is very important. Does any of your research involve irrigation as well? Uh, there has been some, some research, some very interesting research, but not conducted here in Canada or in the United States. Uh, that's uh, research that was conducted in Europe that showed that uh, the frequency of irrigations is far more important than the amount of water that you irrigate. So irrigating uh, every two or three days contributes for disease development far more than irrigating the same amount of, of, of water once a week. So, so yeah, there, there's been some research on that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.